This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. So I wanted to, uh, first I'll, I have no uh, relevant disclosures to uh, 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 relate. So uh, technology is a great thing. We are creating all kinds of ways to occlude the central veins and that uh, I see more and more often uh, patients with unusual reasons to have uh, uh, central venous occlusion. I work at a place that's uh, pretty big in uh, heart transplant and bad and artificial hearts, and I learned that I now have to ask, not do you have a cat, do you have a pacemaker or AICD, but did you ever have? Because I see all these people post heart transplant, who their box is no longer there, and so I can't assume that they don't have central venous obstruction from pacemaker or AICD leads now. But, and you now see patients who are 25 years out from their treatment for Hodgkin's disease, and they've had, the rest, they've had radiation, and they might have had chemotherapy that shortened the lifespan of their kidney, and now they're happy to be alive, but now they have a need for dialysis and uh, maybe some challenging central venous access. Well, how long does it take to create a central stenosis? This is a patient who is near and dear to my heart being left-handed. This patient was also left-handed and she came and said, I want to have an AV fistula, but I want it in my non-dominant hand. Well, of course, her perm cath had been placed on the right side because, you know, 85, 15, you're probably going to be right. Um, and a month later, uh, I got her to the OR quickly, got a fistula in her within a month, and uh, actually found out that she had this uh, brachycephalic stenosis in less than, in, in about a month. And the problem is that, uh, a catheter um, decreases your probability of getting a suitable AV access in that extremity really forever. And even after you remove the catheter, that cascade of scarring has already begun. So it doesn't necessarily protect you from central stenosis when you get the catheter out. Well, first of all, uh, I would echo everything that was said previously about stents. We recognize that stents are a great thing to uh, make it uh, make the vein look good, but usually what it does is it creates a situation where you're intervening every two to three months. It changes to a situation where you may be intervening every five to six months, but um, I would certainly agree that once a stent goes in the vein, you got a plan for when you're going to actually do something to uh, uh, take care of it when it, uh, when it stenosis. And uh, this is uh, supported by, some, by a number of studies that show that, that uh, uh, stenting has good short-term results, but not necessarily good long-term results. Covered stents, if uh, the an anatomy is appropriate, seems to be a little bit more durable than non-covered stents, but I think most people now are in a s situation where they're recognizing that the short-term nature of it is, uh, is uh, uh, accurate and true. So this brings us to what I like to call a removable stent, which is the HERO device. And the HERO device stands for Hemodialysis Reliable Outflow. I went to the uh, product uh, approval committee for the OR once to the hospital to get this on the formulary, in, uh, stocked in the OR, and, and uh, presented all the data. And the first person raised their hand and said, well, I think it should be approved based on the name alone. I mean, how can you not have a hero available uh, when you need it? So there was very good uh, marketing uh, uh, thoughts behind this. This was actually originally developed and marketed by, or marketed by Hemosphere, and then uh, Cryolife uh, uh, purchase the marketing rights, and just recently, earlier this year, Merit Medical has now taken over uh, for uh, um, uh, the distribution and manufacturing of this, and a number of the uh, workforce that was with Cryolife transitioned to Merit, and I think Merit is actually in the uh, um, uh, uh, ex exhibit area. Well, this allows new access for creation in patients, but really more importantly, is important to salvage access in patients who have symptomatic central venous stenosis. So this is the device, and the, it consists of this nitinol-reinforced uh, silicone um, 
uh, outflow component that's five millimeters and its uh, internal diameter. It, uh, a seven millimeter balloon is really good for getting, the, getting it to pass in there and it's connected to uh, originally a, a PTFE graft via this connector piece. Uh, and there, there is now available a universal connector. Now I say universal, but it actually is only approved to be used with uh, the uh, Flexine standard wall or Accuseal graft. Um, but it does turn out that both those two grafts are the ones that most people have been using and the main reason is so that they can get an immediate use graft. It can be exist, it, in my experience, the most durable uh, uh, configuration is a well-established AV fistula and you connect the uh, AV fistula, the, the HERO device with a very short segment of graft uh, to, your out, to your existing uh, uh, fistula and that gives you the most durable um, uh, configuration. Well, the long-term results uh, have been published a uh, number of places and on the HERO website there's a lot of publications. Uh, this is uh, one of the more recent ones that looks at 409 patients uh, who were, uh, who had at least, uh, were placed through 2014 and you can see that the primary patency is actually not too, not too different from, uh, the primary and secondary patency not too different from just a standard graft. And you got to remember that these are all the tough ones. These are the folks who uh, have the, their, their names are on the little box in the IR suite that you're not allowed to take the catheter out without having a wire in. And, and uh, they're the tough customers. So um, there is a wide range of success here, but uh, the, the long-term uh, secondary patency is actually uh, relatively good. There is probably a little bit higher instance of steel, but again, these are uh, the difficult folks and uh, you give give them very good outflow so they can easily um, uh, uh, develop steel. And uh, the bacteremia rates are very comparable uh, to grafts and much better than catheters and that's how it really has been, um, it's uh, classified as a uh, uh, graft, not as a catheter. And as I mentioned, it falls into two groups, those who have a functioning access that may not be working very well or has symptoms as Dr. Dolmash talked about. And uh, these are some pretty impressive patients that you see that come in and I have a lot of patients that come in and say, well, you know, I actually can't find a bra anymore because I have such uh, discrepant sizes of uh, my breasts and they're very happy when you actually get rid of their uh, um, uh, swelling. So as uh, I won't belabor some of these tips, uh, but uh, getting the wire into the right atrium is uh, key and I think Partnering with whoever you have in your institution who has some facility with that is a great thing to do. I really like using a seven millimeter balloon and you can actually use a seven millimeter balloon to load it, to, to lead the HERO device into the uh, right atrium. And uh, I try to keep the outflow segment short. And the place where it's really most critical is uh, where the graft connector is. That's the area that can kink. So I really try to make that parallel to the clavicle, whether it's above or below the clavicle. I try to make it parallel there because that's an area that doesn't necessarily move or kink. And um, I try to, uh, now with the media use grafts, we can avoid abridging catheters because most of the infections that were reported were really probably associated with the catheter that the patient had waiting for the graft to heal in place. It's important this is not a way to treat people with inadequate cardiac output or with inadequ inadequate arterial inflow. They will not be fixed with a hero. And the more you experiment with this, the more you can get kind of creative. So for instance, this is a fistula and the patient actually was on uh, anticoagulation for lupus anticoagulant and, and for other reasons, uh, recanalization was not necessarily an option, but she had a, 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 gra a catheter placed on this side and a functioning fistula on this side and she actually has a hero that crosses over to the other side. But sometimes, and I'll just, uh, the last thing I'll end with is sometimes you don't have to do anything about this. And as I was already mentioned, uh, there may be a peripheral lesion that's causing the patient's symptoms or, uh, and this is a recent, this is just being published this month um, from uh, Dr. Jennings in uh, Oklahoma, but they had 19 patients who had known central venous occlusion and well-developed collaterals and they actually created AV fistulas in them. And actually 60% uh, of them did pretty well. 40% of them had some edema and they had to do some inflow banding um, and uh, outflow uh, uh, coiling and four had to be uh, recanalized. But actually most patients did pretty well in that. So again, don't uh, avoid the oculo-occlusive uh, reflex. I guess it's not the oculostenotic reflex. 
All right, thank you very much.